to the Lord in prayer. Me first. Reverend Polk. Reverend Polk, that's you. He keep calling me. I know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, give, y'all, y'all watch y'all watch our messy uh, uh professor. I'm gonna leave that at that. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are truly the son of the living God. You are the alpha and you are the omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. You are truly a lawyer in a courtroom. You are the uh, parole board uh, that makes decisions about all of our lives. Even when man says no, God, you have the ability to say yeah. Yes. We come right now, Lord God, interceding and standing in the gap right now for Sister Catherine's son, uh, where a man has said that he will never darken the days of the prison, the physical prison that he finds himself in. But based on the stories that she have told, Father God, he has already been set free spiritually, Father God, yes. mentally in his mind, Father God, where it truly matters the most. But more than anything, he is doing a great work for you. He started that work for you behind the prison wall. What the devil meant for bad, God, you've already turned it around for his good. And you are getting the glory. And every time he speaks, God, he is speaking on your behalf. There is a change in the prison walls that is happening based on his conversation with people as he represents you, Father God. But truly, as one who has had their physical freedom taken from them, as one who has been locked behind the prison walls and hear the clink clinks of those keys turning when it's lights out. God, I come and standing in the gap of this young man, God, and asking that, that even though they may have said no, God, that there is a day, there is a time, there is a horizon that is going to happen in this young man's life, Father God. Let the one that that don't even know why they're going to be granting him parole and pardon, God, grant him parole and pardon, God, and not just down the line, but sooner than later, Father God let him remember even after has after he has been released god because we declare and we decree in the name of jesus that it shall be so and you said whatever we would declare in the atmosphere here on earth that you would declare it in heaven so god we declare that this young man will be physically set free from prison one day father god to do a greater work on the outside the work that he's been doing on the inside they won't even be able to understand what he's getting ready to do on the outside father god but Father God, calm his spirit, calm his heart so that he will understand that that day will come. Don't let him lose hope. Don't let him hear the voice of the deceiver saying that he will never be released, God, because at the end of the day, you are the ultimate judge, jury, and you are his advocate right now, Lord God. Give his mama peace and comfort in her spirit so that she will never lose hope that one day she will drive up that prison before he is, is getting ready to be released and he will walk out of there a free man into her arms, God, that there are no more, no more visits behind prison walls, no more visits behind uh, uh, glasses, God. He will truly be free physically as he has learned the lesson of what it feels like to be free spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Father God, let him continue to do the work that you called him to do. The greater work is being done, Father God, and let him never lose sight of who his master is, who his savior is, even being surrounded by all the many voices that are trying to draw him to be a Muslim, trying to get him to be this, that. He serves the true and risen savior, and that is Jesus Christ. We thank you in advance for the victory that one day, God, one day he will walk out of those physical prisons into freedom that you will grant to him. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 We pray, Lord, just for uh, I come, Lord, interceding on behalf of, of my mother, your daughter, and servant, God. I uh, pray for Reverend Poe, Father, praying, Lord, that as she has gone back to work after retirement, God, taking care of the business that you have called her to take care of, God, tending to the needs, Lord, of my nieces and nephews that you have called her to care for, Father, and us to, to come alongside of her with, Father, but, but her commitment, Lord, to them and doing what you call called her to do, calls her, Lord, to come out of retirement and do that work. God, I pray that you would give her the peace to do the work. God, I pray that you would give her the comfort to know, Lord, that even uh, when folks are coming at her sideways, even when 
when the words are not flattering, God, even, uh, Lord, when folk would seek to test patience, God, that you would let her know that you are the God uh, that sits high and looks low, Father, and you have given her a spirit and an empowerment towards peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, God, a peace, Lord, that nobody else can take away, and a strength, God, that is only from you, strength, Father, to fight the battles day to day, even as the enemy seeks to come after her, Lord, through those that might seek to be willing vessels. God, I pray uh, that you would just continue to make a way, Father, that you would in, uh, promote her, God, move her off the phone, do the things you need to do to put her in position, Father, to where even this would not be a test. God, I just pray uh, just that you, you, you would bless her, God, and expand her territory even in this space. Let her be used, Father. Let her light and her witness shine even in this space, Father. Let her be a witness to those who need to hear your loving encouragement just as she has already, God, and let those reminders of those times, Father, be the ones that can carry her through when she's dealing with folks that will seek to sap her strength, God. I also pray right now, Father, for the travels of Sister Amanda, God, uh, her and her family as she's going out to Atlanta for a graduation for a family member. I pray that you would keep them safe while they are on the road, Lord. And then I pray blessings over those that may be driving now, trying to get to the classroom, Father. Keep them safe as well. Keep us all together, Lord, and let safety and peace and strength flow with all of us as we prepare for this class tonight. This is my prayer. I pray it in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father God, I come right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, first of all, just thanking you for being the great and awesome God that you are, Father God, our maker and our creator, Father God. And Father God, right now, I come lifting up Sister Tamika to you, Father God, your child. Father God, I lift up her parents to you right now. I lift up Samuel to you right now. And Father God, right now, I just come interceding, Father God, on her behalf, Father God, that you just touch this family, Father God. Unite them, Father God, closer than ever, Father God. And Father God, we know that you are a family, Father God. So I ask that you provide whatever this family stand in need of to be united, Father God. Father God, we just love you, Father God. And I, we thank you, Father God, for all that you are doing right now, Father God, in this family, Father God. And Father God, you know every need that they stand in need of, Father God. I ask that you just have your way right now, Father God. And Father God, right now, I just ask that you touch Sister Tamika, Father God. And also, Father God, help her to be what she needs to be in this family, Father God. To help alongside, Father God. And Father God, these parents, Father God, help them to be able to parent the way that you would have him to parent. And Father God, Samuel, Father God, I ask that you would have him to be the son that you um, have ordained him to be, Father God. Yeah. Father God, we just thank you right now, Father God. We thank you for the opportunity of prayer, Father God, where we can come interceding for each other, Father God. And right now, just have your way, Father God, only like you can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I come tonight, first of all, to say thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon all of us. Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus Christ to first be grateful for someone such as James Alexander. We thank you for his compassion for his brother, Heavenly Father, and standing and asking for prayer for someone else, Heavenly Father. So we come tonight praying for those in the land of India, praying for those in the land of Israel. Heavenly Father, as we study about these people in, in the different areas, you knew what was going to happen before it happened. You know what's happening now. You know what's going to happen in the future. Heavenly Father, we are just asking you that you cover these people, that you heal this land and heal these people, that you bless those that are still here, the families who are suffering uh, for those that they have lost, Heavenly Father. We ask that you bring peace among them, Heavenly Father. We ask that you guide their hearts and guide their minds, guide their, guide their hands, their feet, Heavenly Father. We just come praying and asking. We're coming together in agreement, Heavenly Father, that you would come and you would be in the midst, Heavenly Father, that you would have a strong hold, Heavenly Father, and do a powerful work, Heavenly Father. And I just come back again on, on Reverend Alexander, Heavenly Father. We're so thankful to have him in our midst, Heavenly Father. We pray for him personally, Heavenly Father, and his family and his children, Heavenly Father. Continue to give 
give him such a heart, Heavenly Father, just to think of others. Continue to give him such a heart, Heavenly Father, that he would want to bring us to prayer for someone else, people that he doesn't even know personally, Heavenly Father, but that he is has a, a compassion for Heavenly Father and that he is feeling their need, feeling their hurt, feeling their pain, Heavenly Father. And we thank you that we are experiencing the blessings that we have, Heavenly Father, in this land, Heavenly Father, that you have brought about some changes for us, Heavenly Father, and that everything might not be perfect the way we want it, Heavenly Father, but that our land is, is a lot more peaceful and that we're not suffering and enduring some of the things that people in other areas are suffering and enduring, Heavenly Father. So we just thank you and we ask you for your love, your guidance, your patience. We ask that everything be done in your will, Heavenly Father. And in the name of Jesus, may we always be in prayer for others. May we always be have compassion in our heart for others, whether they are doing better than we are or whether they are not doing as well as we are, Heavenly Father. But may we always pray for our friends, for our, our loved ones, for our enemies, for our families, for everyone, Heavenly Father. You said that we should pray and pray without ceasing, Heavenly Father, and that we should pray for all, Heavenly Father. So we're asking you tonight for your will, Heavenly Father. We pray that your will be done in this land, in that land, upon the face of this earth, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Lord God. Lord God, we thank you so much right now for every person that has a mind to learn more about you. Lord, you said that if we taste and see that you're good, you will fill us up and we'll be so full that we'll overflow. You said that you will give us the desires of our hearts and you even give us even more than we could imagine. So Lord, I... I humbly come to you and say, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I want to learn, and I want to be around those that want to learn, Father. And I want you to look down upon us, Father, and see that we have the, <clears throat> that we have the heart for you, God. And in you seeing that you have, that we have the heart for you, God, when we look in the mirror, God, let us see a little more of you, God. Let us see a little bit of change, God. Every time we look in our own eyes, God, what I'm asking for is, can we see a little bit of you? So, Lord, as we study, Lord, I'm asking that you would fill us up on the inside and then let it flow out like rivers of water to everybody we come across. We're not going to be able to help it, Father. It's just going to come naturally, and it's going to taste so sweet to their ears, Father, because we're going to be that humble, humble servant that is a good steward and a good disciple trying to be a little bit more like Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, and we love you. And we honor you, and we're going to continue to chase after you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Dear God, it's in the name of Jesus that I come to you. First, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. God, we realize none of us are worthy to even see this day. So, Father, thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And Father, if I, as I have been asked to stand in the gap for my sister Barbara, as she is making ready for new beginnings, God, that you have stepped in and blessed her to be separated from an abusive situation, God. Father, first, I thank you for her safety for her well-being, for her mental capacity. God, we thank you that you promised that you would never put more on us than any of us could bear. So God, thank you right now for the hope that we have in you. Your word has promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So even in these times, God, when we find ourselves physically alone, we're thankful, God, that through your Holy Spirit, who is the comforter. He was, he is there 
and he's able to guide, to comfort. And Father, we thank you that things could be worse, but you didn't see fit for it to be so. So God, I ask that you would bless Sister Barbara, touch her finances, touch her mental wellness, touch her physical wellness, God. And Father, surround her with people that are able to pour into her and build her up, God, and that she would see that you are still her father and that you have people available to love her, give her the love that she deserves. Father, I even pray for her confidence and her self-esteem after experiencing some heinous situations, God, that she would be restored. And Father, that she would find peace in knowing that your word is true, that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love you and are called according to your purpose. So God, we just say, have your way. And we're thankful that you are going to provide strength for the journey. We thank you. We love you, God. And we lift you up. It's in Jesus' name we pray and thanks we give. Amen. 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 Thank you. Welcome to the call, Dr. Cooper. We pray for you. Let everybody know uh, y'all were coming in a little bit a little bit later. Glad to have you on. We are, uh, because it's this great Friday night, and I know. Uh, that many of y'all have worked hard all week long, and now here you are on a phone call where you are dreading these next two hours. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 Lord, I, I couldn't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it's difficult, y'all, but I, I'm, 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 I'm grateful uh, that we have some good material to cover. So everybody should have gotten their outline uh, as well as been able to go over uh, your what's the name, your, your, your commentary uh, that I sent you, just giving you a little bit of lean into today's lesson. I see everybody's already done the attendance poll, and so I'm actually going to uh, take the time. Oh, okay. All right. I had it, had it, had it, had it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take the time to end that attendance poll, even though Sister... Um, Amanda says she may join us, but I want to go ahead. I, I was going, I was going to wait and and add y'all's quiz in next week. We're going, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm, I'm gonna let y'all jog your memory before we get started. That way, once we start, we'll have our break about 45 minutes after, and then we 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 will have another 45 minutes on the other side, and we ought to be out of here right around. A uh, little bit after eight o'clock, we won't make it to eight thirty tonight. But we do have a lot of info to cover, so I'm gonna end this poll, start the other one, and I'm gonna give y'all ten minutes to go ahead and um, go ahead and take your take your quiz. Only five questions, so it should be quick. Y'all ought to be done in in five minutes. And I I, uh, I didn't throw any trick questions in this time. So y'all should y'all should be good. All right. All right. Poll is launched. Ten minutes. I'm gonna give you. If you get done before then, go ahead and take your break, grab your snack. Because when I when we get when I get back at 6:43, uh, we're gonna be running uh, for at least a good 45 minutes so we can get through all of our info. So enjoy your quiz. Uh, Reverend Harper, I'm going to have to leave class for a second. They're having issues with the Friday night Bible study. So I'll be right back in class. I got to leave out so I can log into theirs.
I'm going to fail this test.
God's grace is extended. Two more minutes for those that are still working. Two more minutes, then we'll be done with the quiz. The answer to number three, it should have been none of the above, or all of the above, not none of the above. So everybody's gonna get that one right. I mean, I, that that was on that was on the instructor. So your 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 option at the bottom should have been all of the above, not none of. Thank you. I was confused. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, I, think, I think I checked it anyway, just not reading because the answer was all of the above. I, I think I checked it too. <laughs> I, 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 I like that doesn't. I mean, the nun yeah. never even crossed my mind. I, I saw all of us, never, not none of I us. Oh, uh, me too. That's what I did. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, my my answers was jumping on that one, man. I, I yeah, I got confused. I'm like, well, okay, I'll pick this one. <laughs> so that. That that was that was one that there were questions on. Then I see that also, uh, which covenants were not universal, uh, was also one that 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 uh, we had a few different questions uh, answers on. So uh, y'all y'all will be getting all your grades for your quizzes and your papers uh, this weekend. Everybody from the answers I'm looking at, everybody will get number three straight. So. We all should be definitely at least passing the quiz. I'll give you your results, though, over the weekend. So good job, everybody, on your quiz. Appreciate y'all uh, for wrapping up and finishing. Let's get into our lecture for the day. Now that we've done our prayer, done our quiz, uh, and now we get to actually look at the material uh, that we're going to be covering on today. So uh, did y'all get a chance to go back and look over the scriptural references uh, like we talked about for um, for all those covenants, did y'all did y'all get a chance to walk through at least a few of them? See what God was saying in each of those covenants. Yes. How, how, how do you feel? Give give me some overall feedback on how, how you feel now that you can kind of lay out those covenants and look at them and and see what God is saying. What 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 is that saying to you as you look at? The progression of covenants as well, going all the way from the beginning uh, with the ones we start with Noah's covenant uh, to Abraham's covenant to David's covenant, right? What 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 are you thinking as you kind of look at all of those and then think towards the new covenant that we are a part of? What does that say to you? Give me some give me some raw feedback as we start this class. What I what I see is that God was continuing to give us a chance and, and he kept trying to give us chances and then finally decided that I'm just gonna have to come at this a different way because <laughs> y'all not gonna be able to keep them laws and you, you keep saying you can, you keep promising, but you're not. So I'm gonna have to come at this a different way because I do want you to come home to me. I do love you, I do want you. So I, I'm gonna have to give you a way to get to me that you can actually make, that you can actually 
keep a covenant you can actually keep. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. appreciate the answer. Anybody else? Um, Reverend Harper, I just got two words. Yeah. Mercy and grace. That's all I can say. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> that's all. Got a lot of songs that sing about it today. Grace and mercy. Yes, yes. Your Bible confirms yes. the extreme amount of grace and mercy mm -hmm. that our God operates with. Amen. Amen. That, mm -hmm. That's good. I love it. I Reverend love it. Harper, when, when you said the word extreme, yeah. like the levels yes. that he went through to continually give us chance after chance after chance like like it was endless it, it, and 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 i i went back to uh i would have had to go back to the original intent is that there was a desire in god's heart for yes. our company yes and and, and as mm -hmm. as you go through and you read you start to wonder why would he want company with people like me Mm. When, when all throughout the Bible, I, I, I went back and read uh, when we were doing Amos as I jumped there. And then I went back and kind of looked at all the minor prophets and, and all that happened. Why did he want company with, with us? Humanity. Why? Because all we ever did was constantly disappoint him. And this was before, before he ever decided, like Sister Catherine said, like, y'all just not going to get it. Why didn't he just... You know, wash his hands before he got to uh, before he got to Malachi and said, "This is the way that it's going to be." Uh, it's mind boggling oh. to me, other than a loving and kind God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Anybody else? I love it. It's like God put His foot down, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Well, no. Well, I, so 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 He did, but He moved He moved that foot. So I don't know if I would say. That he definitely I'm moving the goalpost. All, all we see, <laughs> well, yes, is, is, is that grace and mercy kept seeming to be extended. Mm. I'm, I'm going to address that 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 whole idea. We're going to deal with providence of God and His power, and, and whether or not He was figuring out our obstinance along the way. Uh, I don't I don't think He was. So so anybody else before before I jump in. I, I just want to say that you know it really showed me just how messed up we are. Yeah. You know how, yeah. how, how, how you know yeah. that we go, we do, we we go and just repeat the same thing over and over again, and, and there's no way for us to get it right without God's intervention. Amen. That, that, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's now that's key right there, and that's yeah. a revelation that many folk need to come to, including yes. some folk that are already in the church now. Yes. <laughs> yes. If we were gonna look at this thing, you guys, we we have been uh, systematically kind of walking out, uh, you know, uh, the, this plan of redemption from our uh, uh, creation, uh, God's miraculous creation of the world, him speaking it into existence to our creation and, and, and seeing the difference between him speaking the world into existence and him forming mankind in his own image and then breathing the breath of life into us that gave us this image of God that he said they made us in. He, he said, let us make man, uh, mankind in our own image. And so here we are now with, with the image of God, but we are still shaped in dirt. You guys, I, I I don't want us to get away from that. We 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 were shaped out of the mud. Amen. The truth of the matter so is, where I'm from, like talk about coming out of the mud, but all of us came out of the mud, out Amen. of the dirt. And then God shaped us, formed us, and breathed off into us. And so we've walked through over these first few weeks what the fall looked like, what happened when man chose to sin, and the infection caused sin became a dominant trait inside of the genealogy of man. Mm -hmm. that's, what that's, that's what original sin uh, means. It is the idea, and you saw that term on your commentary for the week, uh, this idea that, that ever since sin entered in, it is now inbred into the genealogy of man. All of us have passed down that same rebelliousness, that same waywardness. You hear parents mm -hmm. talk all the time about looking at themselves within their kids. And most mm -hmm. of the time, they ain't saying that in a good way. Most of the time, when Barron's mentioned that, they're saying the same stuff that I did that was out of pocket. I, I'm now looking at my kid, and I can see mm -hmm. that they have some of these same <laughs> seeds all in them. Be why? Because all of us inherited this from our original father, Adam. 
uh, 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 from, from our original mother in Eve. This is mm -hmm. our plight, you guys. And so what we watched or, or what we walked out was a continued increase of wickedness from the original. Not only did Adam and Eve not work together and their lack of unity and and, and oneness in communication and, and who, what God expected caused them to fall, but then we saw that same dysfunction through the family. We talked about uh, 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 disunity through dysfunction, right? Uh, that idea that they sowed this seed that was rooted in sin and now it became multiplied because now families became the seabed we were supposed to be the seabed for righteousness mm -hmm. but we actually became the seabed for the sin and the dysfunction Ooh. that we see traveling all throughout our world we made note of this by by by, no, by noting that if you look at any of these statistical indicators in mental health or in kids that are in trouble uh trauma is caused at the family level most of them yep. Fighting and trying to overcome, and so they're struggling, whether it be with depression, with suicide, with anxiety, uh, with yeah. bad behaviors, activities, mm -hmm. uh, teen pregnancies, you name them, whatever it is, if it's a negative statistical indicator in the life of most humans, a lot of it came from brokenness in our families. And so we tie that back to this original fall and this original breakdown of the family, and we see that we have a we've had a unity problem. And then we see Cain yeah. come in and then even ask the question boldly. He talking to God and got nerve enough to ask God, am, am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> as if, as if, as if, as if wasn't all. So how far were they from the original creation, God breathed, God walking in the, st the, the stillness and the coolness of the garden with them, perfect unity and perfection to the point to where now one generation, he can murder his brother and have the nerve to ask God, am I supposed to be his keeper? Like, like he wasn't already wrong. You guys, look how quick humanity failed. Right. So I'm, I'm doing a recap because I want you to, to bring you up to the covenants, right? So we walk out of that, and then we see that wickedness increases. Cain is banished, uh, he, 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 but he's out there with a mark on him, so they can't kill him. So he's still spreading this dysfunction because God wouldn't go on take him out. So this sin continues to multiply. Wickedness increases in the cities. We have uh, uh, the development of of of, of a, a interaction between the sons of God and the the, the daughters yeah, of God, and we see us take a shortcut. To our God like like nature, we, we 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 take our first shortcut to trying to restore the divinity that God had already placed on the inside of us, and what we'll see from then on out is humanity with correction and corruption. We already passed creation. Once creation happened, we're in the the, the corruption, and now. The correction begins, and rather than us dealing with God's providence and his power and following his way and, and, and knowing that God was, was in a plan of or had created a plan of redemption, we begin to try to plan our own plan of redemption. Mm. <laughs> Short guts on how we're going to get that. Yeah, Adapting that. practices from other religions. This is what we see at the Tower of Babel, right? We see mm -hmm. practices that they did in this area in the ancient Near East. The Sumerian uh, 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 worship was one where ziggurats were normal and they would build towers so that they could go up because they wanted to take a shortcut in their, in their connection with God. And so here, here it is that the people of God Almighty, Jehovah, uh, uh, the, the almighty God began to try to apply some of these same principles in the way that they were engaging God or we are engaging God. So, so we've got to see the pattern of development. God goes all the way into destroying the earth uh, because man's wickedness would not move. Come on, think about that, y'all. Yeah. But not yeah. all people, he preserves some of everything, so okay. everybody run out. as God said in the beginning, that it was good. Mankind was good and his earth was good. And so in the Noahic covenant, we see God promising to restore the earth, you guys. And that's something that many believers today, we don't even think about that. We, we, we think about restoration and redemption from the standpoint of humanity and God restoring and redeeming us. But God said the same, everything that I said was good would be restored. So we pointed out last time how that will be fulfilled. He said, there'll be, I look from heaven, this this John, uh, John the Revelator says, uh, and saw a new earth and a new heaven. New heaven. Yeah, yeah. 
Amen. To restore. So we have our, our, our Noahic covenant. We, we begin there and kind of talk about how God begins the process of working through the covenants uh, with the correction that he was bringing to not only to his creation, uh, uh, but uh, uh, as in the earth, but his creation overall, including mankind. So the covenants begin to be a part of the corrective process, you guys. Uh, and, 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 and after, after a, uh, 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 Noah, we move into the Abrahamic uh, covenant and we see God do the same thing, uh, begin to work through an individual family because the same way the family was supposed to be the source bed of righteousness when yeah. he created man, woman, and child, right? In, in, in the Garden of Eden, God comes back again, not with a new plan, but let me relaunch this plan again since y'all messed it up the last time. Since you done already tried to take multiple shortcuts. So the covenants are, are mandatory. And most believers don't even understand by the time we get to the new covenant. Because we, we, we haven't studied how great this God has been, right, with us. The fact that he has, has given us all of these extended opportunities. Then a lot of times we take for granted. The, the new covenant, the messianic covenant, because we think somehow this is the beginning of God's plan of redemption for mankind. No, this is a continuation of his plan of redemption. And the more we see that, the more we should weep when we worship, because we recognize how gracious and how merciful God is. And I, I, I know for a fact that not enough people understand how patient God has been because we don't weep enough when we worship. We're not sorrowful enough when we sin. We're, 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 not, we're not contrite enough when we find ourselves backsliding and slipping or even off post and off assignment. Not, not even backsliding and sinning, but, but I got more pressing and more important things to do than to dedicate and devote my life to the things of God. And so because of that, uh, often many of us have all of these endeavors out here in the world that we engage in, and most of us have not leaned into truly understanding the God we say we serve. That's what, that's what these covenants uh, were about, not, 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 not just the idea that God was making a promise. It was the promise that we made in return. Right? Uh, I'm sorry. That's a uh, Reverend Harper. I need to mute all. I got it. I did it. Yeah, go ahead. Chime in. What, what I was about to say, uh, and absolutely one of the things that I gleaned from all the studying and reading, uh, like I said, I scanned all the prophets and over and over and over how sin was so rampant, I, I realized that 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 nothing I'm doing today has caught God by surprise. Like, like, like my sin is no surprise. And nope. so he and he has never asked me to stop doing anything on my own any more than he tried to warn the all, all the many times Israel disobeyed him. And yet he's still waiting, saying, stop what you're doing, Sheila, and return to me. Like, like uh, when, when I think that that egregious sin is so bad that he won't forgive me, now I've got a pinpoint to look at what was going on back in the Bible days and realize that that it goes back to what you say. When we read God's word and get an understanding about God's word, I think we become more freer because we don't want to bound us up thinking that we've just done yes. so bad. Yes. Exactly. 100%. We see Abraham's journey of faith that God was covenanting yes. with a man that was from a dirty place, y'all, that had residue of mm. sin all over him, that walked out of his faith in, in, in consistent failure early on, but in consistently moving forward in his failure because he had an authentic call from God, even though he had to come out of some ugly places and go through some dirty places to get to the promised land that God was telling him about. It is a journey of faith. And the more we learn to view it, through, view the Bible through the lens of the journey of faith that God is taking with people 
who will dare to covenant with him, then the more we're able to apply a lot more grace to our situation. And many of us wouldn't be paralyzed in condemnation right now. We would be empowered and emboldened towards service because we would recognize not in our own strength, but the same God that called Abraham a friend of God in spite of his failures desires the same level of intimacy with me and with you. He, he, he offered us a covenant too after all that we had already done. Think about when we came into the covenant, <laughs> the messianic covenant, the new, the new covenant. Think about, I don't know about y'all, but the idea that he would even simply reach out his hand to me and offer for me to be in a covenant, a contractual relationship where he has granted me certain privileges and blessings that are universal, you guys, that he promises to give me. Oh, these are, this is not mosaic. I pointed out, the difference between the Mosaic and all the other universal covenants on purpose. You guys, we need to look at that. We are not under the law. You hear me? We are not inside of that structure where if you do, then I will. This is not what that is. God actually gave his son before we decided to even give our lives over. And then he said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Our covenant is rooted in that truth. While we were Reverend here. Harper, you're gonna make us shout. It's Friday night. I'm sorry, y'all. Mm, I don't know about y'all, but I just yeah. feel the power. <laughs> we, we, we've got to understand these covenants so that we can understand our current covenant, so we can stop taking communion like we will do on this first Sunday, where we remind ourselves the symbol of this covenant is the bread and the wine, and we get to come together as a reminder of our union with a God that ought to be throwing us to the side. And instead, he has arms wide open, so wide that they hung on the cross. We should be reminded of that blood and that broken body every first Sunday, but we should also have a link to every last one of those other covenants and some of the universal ones that we now know, that Davidic covenant, that's still yet to be fulfilled because Christ will sit on the literal throne right here on our earth during the thousand year run, during the thousand year reign of that Noahic covenant that he said, because we know that now that thing is still lingering, that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So we read our Bible, we look at our earth, we go through all of it with a different anticipation when we understand our covenants and what God is trying to do through us, you guys. This is the key word. Sister, uh, 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 Sister Catherine, uh, Reverend Catherine spoke earlier and she said God figured out that he couldn't do it a certain way. No, God is gracious enough that he let us figure out that it couldn't be done any other way. God allowed us a king when we didn't want a king. Come here, Samuel. Come here, come, 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 come here Saul. That's right. He allowed us a king. He allowed us to clamor for governmental authority thinking that that would be the answer to us. And some folk are still looking for their answers in the government today. Amen. He allowed, he allowed them to try to take their shortcuts to get there only to strike them down and let them know that you, your, your, your towers cannot reach this high. He allowed mankind to think that the law was good enough and to create divisions among the people where some were much better at following the law than others. And he said, if you can't follow it all, you haven't followed any of it. He had to let us know, Mosaic, that's not good enough either. No, he wasn't figuring it out. He had to let us figure it out. And we've got to get to the point to where we recognize what he says in John 14. And six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes unto the Father except by me. And he put his blood on it, died on the cross. So this messianic hope, this new covenant is an extension of a graceful God that we have watched. If you read the Bible. If you've understood the story, and this is why teachers and preachers like yourself and some of you lay people who aspire to be in these spaces or simply want to grow in your faith have to have a deeper understanding because you got to be able to give somebody the whole story. Without your understanding, how do you give it away? Amen. 
So, so we're walking you guys through these covenants to catch us up so that we can stand firmly. By the time we began our march through the New Testament in the final four classes that start next week, you will know what everything is built on. All of this was the foundation. And many folk preach and teach the gospel of the New Testament without the foundation of the Old Testament, without the foundation of the covenants, without an understanding of the fall and the effects of original sin and why we needed God to redeem us through the Messiah. So we give a very shallow presentation of the gospel. And we got a whole bunch of folks that are running down aisles and all we're telling them is if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus and that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. And folks, believe that and they come and they want to believe it but how do you believe that he rose from the dead if you can't even believe that he covenant covenanted with Abraham in his flawed state in the Old Testament how do you go from one to the other because then you'll continue to elevate the, the, the deity that he is, and he should be, he should be elevated, but his act will seem like something that you do not deserve because you don't, but because you don't have understanding of why he did it, and that it's a continuation of his promises from the beginning, and that God is still restoring his thing that he creation, that he created good and bringing it back, you think that this is an individual thing and not recognize you're a part of a broader plan of redemption, and we don't paint that picture well. You guys, we don't paint that broader plan of redemption picture very well. Tell, 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 me, tell me how you feel about the presentation of the gospel to you within or without these covenants. Did, did, did you receive it that way? Did you understand it that way? Did you recognize the continuation? Did you see that bigger, pay, bigger picture? If you didn't, then how does that affect the way you see the work of God when we start talking about the story of redemption? T tell me how you feel. Well, I'll chime in. It, it's always yeah. been presented, been in church all my life, pretty yeah. much, and and. You, you hear the good news. It's kind of like watching a, a good movie, but just starting in the middle and not, it, it, it's still a good movie. But you didn't watch from the beginning. I mean, you, you think about it, how, how good the color purple is. But if you just start when she uh, got her own business going yeah. forward, you missed a whole lot of what she went through no to doubt. make that so. So I, I think that this, this background information, um, it, it, it gives you a deeper root in you wanting and desiring to, one, love God, please God, um, just in your walk because of how gracious he has been to mankind yeah. and, and, and the lineage that I am in, you know, with my, with my dirty blood, he still wants me to be a part of him and tells me that I am his. Yes. And even after I've accepted him, still, uh, and, and I mean, it's just amazing. Like you, you're able to see how deep his love really goes, but you can't still can't put words to it because I know personally, uh, we cut folks off after a couple of times. Yeah. Come on, up. But how right. many generations of people have, I mean, we, we talking thousands of years here, bro. I mean, yeah. before Christ, where he never gave up. I think it was uh, uh, V. Michael McKay has a song, He Never Gave Up On Me. And, and now that has a deeper meaning. Uh, Amen. Because you see how many ways, okay, y'all y'all still not getting it. Um, let me try this. Y'all still not getting it. Let me try this. Y'all still not getting it. Let me try this. Um, and I just I just thank God for, for his grace and his mercy. You, you can't put it to words. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Anybody else want, want to chime in? How, how do you process this? I think for me, Reverend Harper, now uh, I, I, I get the good news. See, because the Gospels are the good news. And so all I've been riding on all these years was just the good news. Uh, yeah. But never, never once did I think, why did it? Why did I need good news? Mm. Like, 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 I never thought, so, did it not uh, click in my head? That, that if there was a need for the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ, then what was going on that there had to be some good news? You see what I'm saying? So now when I read the gospels, 
I get it. Like, like, like that, that that's, that's the good news. Even my, my salvation uh, uh, came about because of a whole bunch of stuff that went on in the old Testament and, and a whole bunch of things that happened. So I get the good, I get the, the, the principal divide, the bridge that, that, that brings the old Testament into the new Testament and why you can't have one without the other. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Chime in. That's good. Reverend Harper, I just want to chime in. You know, I told you before, you know, I, you know, in my paper, I said, sometimes I just can't put in the words. Yeah. And it's really making me emotional. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking about the grace and the mercy. Come on. <laughs> and, oh, thank you, Lord. Mm. Right, right. And I said this week, when you sent this, I read through it. But I did understand, the part that I did understand, the grace and the mercy, how he kept giving chance after chance after mm. chance after chance, you know? Yes. And, and for me, it's a foundation. It have already empowered me. And for one, I, you know, I think about all this grace and mercy he gives to me. I'm just looking at it personally. Yes that he have given to me, he's still giving to me. Yeah. And um, it makes me want to give that away to others, yeah. have that Amen. same grace and mercy toward other people. And I'm like, Amen. who am I? Who am I? Lord have mercy. My dirt. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Just giving me chance after chance after chance. Even though I wasn't born back then, but it all led up to me. Lord yes. have yes. mercy. Mm. Amen. Amen. No, no. And oh, you, thank and you, you, Lord. You mm. Sometimes beyond yourself so that you can truly see it within yourself. Yeah. The more I expand the picture to see how gracious he's been long term, the more I understand how much it means that he's still extending grace to me. Oh, yeah. He's been giving it over and over throughout the generations, and he's still got enough grace and mercy left over for me today. That's oh, powerful, yes. you guys. Mighty, mm, yes, mighty power. I, so I, I, I appreciate you, your, your raw sharing. That, that's what we need. Listen, we, we begin this. I sent you out the document. It says, we have moved from God's perfect creation to a fallen creation and watched as mankind grew increasingly wicked the further that we got away from God's original plan that was built on oneness and fellowship with God. Mankind has consistently tried to take shortcuts in our attempts to be restored to our original state of dominion through perfect creation, godly empowerment, and regulated righteous living. Those are, the, those are necessary to pay attention to. He gave us, in our original state, you guys, he gave us a power uh, of dominion through that perfect creation in God, our relationship with him, to, through, through also a godly empowerment to be able to live out the task that he put us here to do. But he also gave us a regulated righteous living. We were supposed to live inside of the boundaries of what it was that God actually desired from us and designed us for. But most of us are, have been going against our original design since we're, we were created. And this is the image of God, the Imago Dei inside of us. We're fighting against that. God's image is the thing that should dominate no matter how much flesh we're wrapped in. It was diminished because sin came in and became an infection that was passed on throughout the family of Adam and Eve and eventually throughout the entire human family. This is our original sin that we brought up earlier. So how many of you have processed in the past the role of original sin in, in, in determining your need for salvation? Anybody? that we understand that we were inheriting sin from Adam, not just our actions. Yes. We get that? Yes. Okay, amen. Do we really process it though? H have we really thought about what that looks like? That sin has been an infection that's been passed down to us for thousands of years? We're talking about the coronavirus right now. We've labeled it a pandemic because it's worldwide. Do we recognize this was the first worldwide pandemic? I think what what I what ha I have heard and how it was played on the flip side, instead of looking at it as a um, infection, something you want to get rid of, it almost uh, uh, 
it enables some people in thinking, well, mm-hmm. since I was, it, I've been like this, yeah. I didn't have any control or I didn't have a say so. So it, it gives a false sense of comfort in that it's okay to be this way. Amen. Born in sin, uh, shaped in iniquity, huh? Mm-hmm. Or the fact that Reverend Harper, or the fact that, well, it won't kill me like the plague. It, it won't yeah. physically kill me. And so because it won't physically kill me, I'll, 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 I'll repent a little bit here and there, but but it, it ain't gonna do that much damage. Like it, we didn't, I don't think we fear our sin the way that we fear the plague, because we know the plague can kill us physically. <laughs> but I don't think we fear it like I don't think we fear our sin that way. And, 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 and that sound like that sound like Satan in the beginning. What do he say in the garden? You shall not surely die. Surely die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and many, many of us have listened to the voice of Satan when it came down to how we interact with this thing called original sin. You're exactly right, because we cannot see the infection, because we do not see it manifesting itself in a sickness that makes us cough or grow boils or, or lay down in the mm-hmm. bed, whatever that thing might be due. We don't see the death, the physical death coming. We can't see the sin sick nature of our soul. So we have listened to the live Satan that says, you shall not surely die. Mm, surely die. As aggressive, fighting against this original sin, as we this original infection, as we should be. This is I why like the, the truth comes that the enemy is truly the inner me. That, that, that me. Most, most of my work is not those that are outside of me. The enemy that I'm dealing with is the inner me. It is the me that has been shaped and conditioned in the same sin and iniquity that the Bible tells me I was born in, into the thoughts, into the ideas, into the patterns of belief and living. I I talk about it often in terms of I was a sports guy when I was younger, and the better you get in sports, they say it's because your your hand, your, your hand eye coordination is good because of muscle memory reflex that the more you do something over and over again, it becomes something that's unconsciously done. And then after the unconscious, if I actually start working on that thing, then I can consciously perfect it as well. And if we were to tell the truth, many of us have lived in sin so long, we perfected it in some ways. Oh, okay, all right. I know we like to think about sin as as drinking and drugs and and, and sex outside of wedlock, outside of marriage and all of that. And so many of us, especially once we're in the church, we don't think we sin anymore. But many of us, even in the way that we show partiality to some folk, that's an ingrained sin. The idea that we can look up and look down on others, and some of us, it's at such a subconscious level because of that muscle memory reflex and the fact that we've been shaped in spaces where it was normalized that we don't even know that we're doing, let alone doing it, let alone understand that we need to be fighting against that very notion inside of our flesh. Amen. Come on. It ain't just the big sins that we can see. Amen. A lot of our sins are subconscious because they exalt themselves against the knowledge and the righteousness, the desires of God from our original creation. They do not fit in line with the godlike nature that he put on the inside of us. And this is why he says that our, our fight, and we, we ain't in the New Testament at any time to preach it, but is, is that we <laughs> are to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, you combine that with the Apostle Paul saying, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You combine that by saying, cast down every evil imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge, the mindset of God. Over and over again, let the uh, 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 think on these things. Whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is true, right? Think on these things. He's consistently been trying to get us to reshape the mind so that the mind, the heart, the will of a man, which is our, which is in our brain, it's in this thought process that we have, right, can actually be inclined back to the things of God and against our original sin. This is our battle. And this is what God keeps showing grace for because he recognized that man needs grace because this is so deeply rooted in him. Man needs that good news. Who said somebody wanted to give that away earlier? 
that God is gracious and that he's merciful because he recognizes throughout centuries and, and millennia that mankind has struggled with, with rooting out their original infection. So, original I sin. Like that. I like that infection. Yes, sir. I like that word. That was a, that was a great choice of words, infection. Yes, sir. Because if, if infection go unchecked, guess what? You get septic. Yes, I mean, sir. It, I mean, it, it infects the whole entire body. Come on and, now, and that's what And that's what that's what sin does for us. It, 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 it's running rampant. And then you, all of a sudden, after a while, you start resisting. You start yeah. resisting the antibiotic that they put in there because you, you, you build up fight stuff again. That's what I do this at work. So that's why that really, I'm tying it in now that when, when yes, you get sir. septic, they do what they call a culture and sensitivity. Yes, and sir. then you, you got to figure out which antibiotic works better for you because God put all these covenants in trying to see, but we need to go from covenant to covenant. Woo! Come on, Doc. Rem, Rem, I like that child's word, it's infection. Not, I, I just, I just had to say that. Yes, sir. <laughs> And, 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 and man, only, there's only one. This ain't like this ain't like uh, coronavirus where we've uh -huh. got the, the, the Johnson and Johnson and the Moderna and the five. No, 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 Doc. Ain't but one of them that's going to be to get rid of the infection. But many of us are, are living so much on the grace that comes with the new covenant. We haven't even thought about actually being healed from the infection. And so a lot of the believers today that are in church, we're, we, we'd, rather, we'd rather rest in grace and the recognition of universal sin and, 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 and the fact that we've been tainted and this infection is age old and, and say that God knows my heart as opposed to recognizing that, no, God actually is telling you this gospel is strong enough. This word and spirit in combination is strong enough to heal you of your infirmities. We don't see it that way. We've got to begin to change our sight. God, God's grace has granted mankind multiple universal covenants that are rooted in the mercy of God and his kindness towards us. And, and, and the plan of redemption crosses the multiplicity of these covenants that God is still holding himself to. God is, that's what universal means. God is, he ain't waiting on you. He's not doing it because of what you do. Your righteousness, our righteousness, my righteousness is but filthy rags. So this is not a two-way covenant. <laughs> He's doing this in spite of me. That's why I should respond. In choosing Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans, modern-day Iraq, God chose a pagan to lead the family of faith that we are all extensions of today. The residue of original sin of Abraham's culture and even our own is the reason why God's grace has been the central theme of our faith. Just like Abraham in his journey, we have all failed to live fully into the covenant with God because of our own residue from original sin and I can put pride off in there. Abraham was intimate with God and considered a friend of God in spite his residual sin. God spoke to him directly because of this intimacy. As the nation of Israel came to be, Moses was the first prophet that spoke on God's behalf, but many would follow. So he established his relationship with Abraham. Abraham became the father of the faith. Abraham's family finds himself in Egypt under the bondage of a taskmaster, a hard taskmaster. And after 400 years, under bondage of a hard taskmaster, all of my Americans ought to be able to shout, clap for joy just a little bit. God said, let my people go. That's why you see rumblings in America right now as the, their original sin has rumbled back to its surface because God is a patient God and a merciful God and a graceful God, even for oppressors. But he runs out of patience after a certain amount of time. And America is beginning her, reckoning, her, beginning her reckoning process right now because that same God, after that 400 years for, for Africans, uh, uh, Africans of the diaspora here in America, has begun to say, let my people go. What do you say when they got ready to travel out of uh, 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 Egypt and into the promised land? He gave them a transfer of wealth. 
People, people see, and we're so busy waiting on stimulus that we don't understand. God was not preparing us to party in this place. He's actually preparing us for an exit if necessary. But we're so busy trying to turn up and do what we've been doing for generations. Most of us don't have a long-term plan. I ain't gonna get into my geopolitics. That's my that's my black man rant. I'm gonna leave that alone. I, I'll let it go. We'll stick. We'll stick to it. But this is in the text, you guys. We've got to begin to see a bigger picture. God is doing something different. And we're in the middle of that different right now, 400 years. So Amago Day and original sin are what we're wrestling with. We're going to wrestle with them on the other side. And we're going to do it as we walk through these prophets, talk about their central themes, and then wrap up our Old Testament. But before we do that, uh, I ain't seen none of y'all get restless. So y'all y'all make me think I'm actually, y'all y'all be enjoying the class. But it's actually break time. So we're going we go, we to take a break. Uh, and then we will come back in 10 minutes, you guys. And on the other side of it, I'm gonna move a lot quicker. No prayers, none of the other stuff we have to do. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna finish getting through, uh, uh, the, we'll, we'll go through the definitions on uh, the Imago Day and original sin, talk a little bit about that. But then we wanna talk about all the themes of the prophets uh, and, and we'll wrap this up for the night. So 10 minutes, see y'all back here, make it 12, cause there was 12 disciples. It's 728. I'll see y'all back online at 740.
get it so everybody can get on to their weekends officially. I wish I could have a weekend. Who was that? Oh, so, so that, so you don't get no weekend. Well, I, I say weekend, but you know, we, we, I'll be at the church most of the day tomorrow, <laughs> Sunday, still working, got some counseling. But this part will at least be over. I guess that that, that was a little bit better. You working? <laughs> I, I take this over working, clock it in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so you got to clock in tomorrow? Yeah, I have some challenging people. <laughs> you got a woosa. We'll make sure to throw you in the prayer request, don't you? We oh, please. The, uh, please do. At the beginning of this, we got you. Yeah, in a minute, they be wanting about to trigger something. <laughs> my, my mama knows something about that, don't <laughs> you? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's let's get at it, you guys. So we, we, I'm a, my my goal is to have us out of here uh, in about 30 minutes or so. Uh, so that means we're gonna be moving quickly. All right. Uh, let's pull our screen back up on the screen share and jump at it. Where we at? Boom. All right. There we go. So so for for us, you guys, obviously we 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 get down to the bottom line of this, which is that through all of this, God is working in us to restore His original image, the original thing that was good. Uh, it was not the dirt. It was not the lump of clay that was good. It was uh, it was the it, it was the body that was animated uh, by God in His image and for His purpose that was good. So so when we look at this, we want to look at this image of God thing. Make sure we understand the concept. This is a broader theological doctrine. It is not just a Christian doctrine, as you see. It's a it's a doctrine for Jews, the doctrine for Muslims as well, as particularly uh, the. Set of the Muslims, and it says that humans are made in the image and the likeness of God. This is a, a, a necessity to understand because if that's the case, and all of us were made in this image, then the divisions of this world, some of them that have even been codified and enforced through religion, uh, then though that 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 puts a false nature on that religion that has enforced this. Our colonial religion that was put in place, our slaveholder religions that were put in place were in direct opposition to the actual word of God. There's no wow. way that we can ever claim, and, 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 and you know, people get upset with me because I say this fairly boldly, that the religion of slaveholders was the religion of Christianity. Some people wow. honor those people. They honor those theologians. They honor uh, those pastors and teachers and leaders that were there. There's no honor in that for me because for me, that's in direct opposition to what the word of God actually says. If we are Thank all made in his image, how am I ever able to justify uh, abusing, taking advantage of oppressing another human? One of the other reasons why we had to spend as much time in the prophets. I wanted you to understand Amos. I also want you to go back and understand the true reason reason that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, that it was not homosexuality, was because many of us are dealing with nations that still exist in this framework today. And, wow. and, and a bunch of these folks are claiming to love God. Wow. We, we've we've got to, it is not mine to judge that individual. It is mine to look at fruit and to determine whether or not that fruit is the fruit of the spirit or not. And I can tell you very, very plainly that there are a lot of actions that have been justified in the name of God that had nothing to do with God. And we have to begin to be able to see stuff like that because there are people, especially inside of the black community, that reject our faith because of the slaveholder's hand that has been on it. And we've got to see the faith beyond and before that and understand God's original intent and intention. And by learning and going through the prophets, we actually get to see what God says in rebuke of nations just like America. America right. is not, is not the, 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 the shining city on the hill, the Zion that, that many 
conservative uh, evangelicals would like to paint it as. She's got skeletons in her closet and they are, they are skeletons from the mass murder that was committed and for a lot of them in, uh, under leadership of people who claim to be following after the Christian faith. So I, I won't I won't spend as much time on that. You analyze it. You you you've got to look at those things. You go back. You measure whether or not an entire government uh, that that murdered uh, the indigenous uh, people that were here, the Native Americans, and, and, and mm -hmm. caused genocide there, and enslaved a whole nother people. Whether those individuals are operating under God's direction, I don't see any Holy Spirit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't see any of mm -hmm. God's. Direction. That's just me. I know I couldn't get away with that. I, I have a problem not putting the cart back at, 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 at the grocery store. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> my, my spirit is vexed when I have nerve enough to try, want, want to. Got somewhere to go. Want to leave it in the middle of the parking lot. And the Lord has nerve enough to convict me and make me go make sure I walk that cart across the, the parking lot. So the idea that these folks could own slaves, murder, brutalize, rape, torture and all of this and that the spirit didn't say anything but was somehow there all right. <laughs> yeah, that's good I'll leave that alone. So, that's yeah, good in his image and it's right but for the in the same token it's no different uh than the than the jews right now that right. Are jerusalem and are, are and are able uh to cause the violence that they do in palestine that's right there by them it's no different same thing no different than the Muslims who who who, who are also waging holy war, uh, right? Jihad, uh, in, 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 as somehow as if this is something that God is ordaining. I wish I had more time to take you through some of the Old Testament scriptures and walk out the difference between what God ordained and what God allowed. I, I really yeah. do wish we could walk through some of those things. And I hope you take some of the future courses where we're walking through Old Testament and really taking more time with these scriptures. But what I know is that if we're all made in the image of God, there's a whole lot of activity that's gone on in the name of God that had nothing to do with God because God values all life, not just right. life the womb, not just white life, not just life of folks that are privileged, but all life. So yeah. how are we made? in God's image. I want to look at that real quick before we move on. Reverend to, Harper. Yes. Before you go, real, real quick, before, uh, when you went to saying that hopefully some of us will take the uh, Old Testament class, yes. let me tell you something. Before I took this class, it had yes. never happened. I was scared of Old Testament. I, I wasn't even sure as I, I was going to be able to even understand half of what was in the Old Testament. But just through the teaching so far yeah. is that I'm definitely not afraid of it anymore. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 And, and these cover the, the things that you're getting are key to unlocking the New Testament. I mean, the Old Testament, because you you understand the flow of redemption and what God is doing. And it's not all of this confusing stuff like it can be. Amen. Yeah. Even when you go through something as difficult as Leviticus and you, you got all of these laws and all of these statutes and all of this stuff that we're supposed to be following to know that this was a part of the Mosaic covenant, that conditional covenant, that he was only using it to teach us and train us on how difficult holiness was, especially in man's uh, strength, right? To, without the Holy Spirit and without that empowerment that we couldn't live into a perfection. So understanding is everything. So I, I appreciate that. Let, let's let's look, let's get into these three different views of what it looks like to be made in the image of God. The substantial view, the functional view, and the relational view. The substantial view says that the image of God within us is in, it is our soul. It's the essence of man. It is, uh, if you were uh, to try to put it into terms that we could understand, uh, it, is, it is the computer that drives the entire network. It, it's that, that source computer. It, it is the space. And, and listen, the, the, here, here's the reason why computer is a great uh, 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 analogy for the soul because the computer can be programmed with whatever program you put on it. Boom. That's good. The computer sees an infection, that infection can crash the computer. Yep. The computer was That's made good. to function for you. It was made to operate a certain way. 
But we, by putting the wrong thing on it, when I was younger, they used to have uh, uh, music sharing and LimeWire was a thing back then. Uh, my mother probably getting the highs now because when, when, when we were younger, she, she first came home from prison. She had a couple uh, computers that got crashed by my brothers and sisters, my brother and sister, the twins, because they kept downloading music that kept putting an infection on the mainframe of her computer. Yeah. And many of us, based on the stuff we've talked about, what we're exposed to, family, violence and trauma, community, stuff that we go through, we've gained infections that have harmed our soul. But our soul is the original image of God on the inside of us. This is the thing that makes us an animate being aware beyond our mindsets and these temporary states that we're in. This is the part of us, the soul is the part of us that that is actually, uh, it is the, 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 the part of us that is eternal. The soul lives on. So once we are gone, this soul is going somewhere for eternity. Whether it is uh, to, to be with God, come on up, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant, or whether it is depart from me and we being cast down, that's going to be up to us to, to deal with based on where we stand with him. But the soul is eternal. So we've got to start looking at that. That, that's, that matters. If that's the eternal part of me, why wouldn't that be the primary portion that I'm sowing into? If the soul is my primary part, if that's the eternal why are we taught to focus so much on the body? So much on the mind. Wholeness is mind, body, and soul. Some of us have been working on our body and our mind forever and can't get it together because we don't recognize that true work and transformation starts at the soul level. So the image of God within us is this soul, this eternal nature that's on the inside of us. But the image of God is also functionally at the authority. He said, I made man in my own image and I gave them dominion. That, that, that's, that's huge right there. That crosses over, you guys. That's not for some of us. All of us have that eternal soul on the inside of us. All of us, based on God's original declaration, have this authority and this dominion that he's granted us. So, so how do we deal with the fact that especially us, everybody on this call is, is, is African in roots, right? Whether you African American, whether you are Trinidad, whether you know what, whatever your space you come from, you, you, you have African roots. But African roots all around this world, the authority and the image of our souls has been diminished systematically. How are we working to repair the parts that have been diminished? How has the gospel that we've been taught through European lenses helped us to repair the part that has been diminished? You would think that our blackness didn't matter. Yeah, no, but somehow all of these black individuals have the same diminished state of their soul. So while my blackness does not elevate me above any person because I can't be partial, I can't turn around and after dealing with racism, be racist myself. I can't turn around after dealing with white supremacy, turn around and now advocate black supremacy. But what I must understand, especially before I get to a gospel that was supposed to be restoring and ultimately restoring me to my original form where the image of God is within me, I've got to understand how that image has been reduced in particular people. Y'all tracking with me? And for us, that particular people, for us, is folks of dark skin hue. So we've got to know that plight. We've got to understand that. We've got to recognize how our authority has been taken, not by the God who created us, but by some evil folk masquerading under the, under the witness of God, right? And trying to give us a paternalistic, do what I tell you to do religion, as opposed to a transformative, restore the image of God in me religion. And those are two different things. And many of us have had a do right religion that's been handed down to us, not a restore, restore the image of God in your religion. And we've got to understand the difference between the two, not only for ourselves, but for the people that we've been called to give it away to. So that when we give it away, Sister LaShawn, we can give it away in a way that empowers a generation that does not see power in the Christian faith. And there's power there. If we simply go back to our original goal, restoring the image of God in every man that, that, and woman that God brings us in contact with. That's a revolutionary concept, you guys. 
because by restoring that, I have to restore awareness of my soul, care of my soul, soul care becomes something intentional. I have to restore and help them to understand that the, 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 the dominion and the authority that God has given. And then last but not least, I have to help each individual, if they are being restored into the image of God, understand the relationality that we are like God, that we are created as an us and not an I. Let us make man in our own image. And most of our problems today come because we are just like Cain. Am I my brother's keeper? Is that my job, really? To take care of, to care for, to be concerned about the well-being of somebody else? Am I really, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. That's why he said that the commandments can be summed up in two things. What are they, y'all? Sum up the commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all uh -huh. thy soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Boom. So yes, if the if the commandments can be summed up in two, yes, I am my brother's keeper. And in that, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna love him as myself, check this out. Here go the issue, y'all. Here's the caveat. If I have not allow God to restore his image in me because I don't understand all the ways that it's diminished. How am I going to help somebody else restore the image of God in them? So I am, in essence, a lot of times loving them just like I love myself, but it's not a full love. It's not a whole love. It doesn't become a restorative love. Some of our love, if we're going to be honest, has been to tell people to lower their expectations. <laughs> Uh, especially in black folk, we're scared of failure. We're scared of conflict. Uh, our, our ancestors taught us this to preserve our safety, preserve our yes. Safety. You were told, you were told to, to 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 bend down, to minimize, to we squashed our own divinity. Anybody gonna say amen or ouch? Amen. <laughs> That has been, sure. that has been, that's what white supremacy has done to us in this space and around the world. So my revolutionary concept is not to elevate my blackness, it's to elevate the image of God on the inside of me. The fact that I stand equal and, 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 and eye to eye with any man, woman, boy, or girl all around the world, no matter their stature, no matter their income, no matter their ethnicity, because we were all made in his image. And we've been bowing down for far too long, black people. Amen. So, <laughs> God wants Amen. us to raise up, not so that we can rise up, like you said, to do what our oppressor, our enemy has done, but just so that we can be restored to the original image of God that he created us in. And then we'll see what we're, we're truly capable of. Most of us can't even dream at the right level. It is, it is outlandish, right? Or, or the anomaly for a black woman to grow up thinking she can be the president of the United States or a black man to even think that. But you know how many young white children run around thinking that and dreaming that as a normal dream? Yeah. There are no limits that tell them they can't, right? CEOs of companies and, and the places of control. And this ain't about having control in this world. Because if you, if you know me, truly know me, then you know that I, I am one who believes in living outside of the matrix. So I'm not concerned about the world. I'm concerned about our, the of God on the inside of us. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So when we restore that, we'll restore that eternal soul. We'll restore that God-given authority. We'll walk with it like you got it. That's what some people call me cocky, but they see me walk with God-given authority. I walk because I know that it's not based on what I've done because I'm a flawed, sinful human being. But the grace of God that covers me and the spirit and word of God that empowers me tells me I can go anywhere that I want to go. That's the image of God restored in me that you see, you guys. <laughs> if all of us should have that. Amen. 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 And then Amen. We back to the us and not just the I. One of the things that allowed us to be weakened for an extended period, period of time is the fact that we were broken down and fractured into small groups, you guys. And those, those, those groups began to focus on self-preservation. And we whittled it all the way down to where we're just concerned about one family at a time. When we came, came over here, we were clans and tribes. We were not individuals. We were not eyes. We were us. We were we. And the faith that we serve starts off with a we, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a us. <laughs> 
let us make man in our own image. So if we're made in his image, relationally, we have to get back to the us and the we and not the I. That's when we will be showing ourselves to be operating in our God-like spirit. So we went over original sin, you guys. You see the major prophets and the minor prophets. Major prophets are, are the ones most of us know and, and, and have heard or seen somebody preach out of. The minor prophets, not as much, but I would encourage you to go through them as you can. It is some good stuff in these books, especially when you begin to look at the earth through a, a, a through, oh, and the continuum of God restoring all of his creation. Then what you see is, is how angry God is <laughs> right, you see the anger of God that we are diminished, that the image of God is diminished in man, and that his earth is diminished as well. Uh, so, so what do we see? Major prophetic themes. We see a message of repentance, right? Y'all saw that in Amos. Repent. Oh. You, O Israel. I know what I said about all the other nations, <laughs> but you, O Israel, have some repenting to do as well. Then mm -hmm. we see judgment in the face of disobedience. Uh, they, they were in exile. God kept sending them through stuff. Uh, could it be uh, that, uh, that, that the fact that we have allowed uh, this people group who did not know God to shape the way that we understand God has put us in a place where we now no longer worship God truly? And because of that, some of the stuff that we're dealing with ain't from the white man himself, but it's actually based on our own wickedness that we live in right now and the fact that we have not come back to God's word. Could it be? It I'm, could be. It could be. It I, is. I, I believe so. <laughs> I, I believe I believe it is. And this also takes us out of this victim mentality that we deal with as well here in America, where sometimes we, we deal with the fact that some we can't do anything because it's been like this for so long and this is just the way that it is and all that other kind of stuff that we, uh, you know, no, no, no. Our, our God says that there is some direct actions that you could take. Uh, and it is the message of repentance after our disobedience that will begin to allow us to look for a time of future blessing, you guys. God is a restorer. And it takes time sometimes to restore because we're stubborn. And we keep on fighting to go back to the thing that caused us the trauma and the problems in the first place. So some of it ain't going to be pretty, just like Abraham's journey wasn't pretty. But we see the prophets over and over again showing us that there's a time that you can look forward to because God is a restorer. So he's never going to allow us to stay in ruin the same way he will never allow us to sit in sin. God goes in cycles, just like this earth. He keeps revolving. And we've got to make sure that we are sowing the seeds of repentance in this season that will allow us to look for the time of future blessings. Amen. Amen. And we saw some of the Israelites receive these blessings, and we saw some of them still struggle. Amen. So the theme of worshiping one true God is also uh, one of those things. Over and over again, he deals with our idolatry. Today, our idolatry is anybody? Consumerism. That's what I was going to say. Our number one, we are in a capitalistic economy, and many of us don't even see that we are caught up in this consumer-based economy, that we're wasteful, that we're frivolous. It's one of the number one things, that we love and are controlled by this money, that we are trying to get to where the money reside, where the money reside. Oh, okay, that's, that's, <laughs> that's something else. That's, no, 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 that's, vi that's viral social media stuff. But that's our disposition. We're trying to secure the bag, most right. of us. We've spent our times and, 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 and don't even realize these are things that we end up recognizing after, but, but folks are supposed to be raising families. And because we're so caught up in the provision side of raising family, we don't actually get to do the parenting side of raising families. And many of our black folk have suffered with getting older, recognize that we gave them everything, but we didn't actually parent. Them. And we got a whole generation, two of them now, that's running around on the loose that have been provided for, but they have not been parented. Why? Because we, too, even under the guise of righteous, take care of your family. No, we've actually gone further than taking care of them. We, we, we've gone into teaching them how to live in and revolve in this same consumer society. And our kids are more infected with it than we were. We're going to be real? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. 
All right, we got y'all know I ain't gonna cut no corners. We're gonna go on and say it like it is. So <laughs> right the, on, bro. Right the on. prophets, the prophets were saying these things thousands of years ago, y'all. They were telling us about our idolatry. Worship mm -hmm. one God. You don't need mm -hmm. no golden calves. Don't bring, don't bring the, don't turn the gold of your oppressor into a statue that reminds you of your oppressor. They, they said, one of my favorite artists, uh, 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 Toby Nwigwe, he's out of Houston, African cat. He say, he say, we, he say, he say, Lord, bless my people uh, going through all their pain. We not slaves, but we really love the whips and chains. <laughs> Now, now, for those of my older crew that don't know whips and chains in colloquialism, the whip is the car, the chain, I obviously the chain is the necklace that we wear. But he says that we're going through pain, but don't judge them, Lord. They ain't, they ain't slaves, but they really in love with the whips and, whips and chains. chains. That's our generation now, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> That's because we lean into and talk yep. to some of this idolatry now. We're going to have to deal with that truth. And we've got to become the prophetic witness against that truth now. Amen. So accepting uh, uh, God's love and mercy on the other side of that. What did we start this thing off today? Rejoicing because we see it through the extension of those multiple covenants, how deep his love runs, how extensive his grace and his mercy are. And then being just, especially to the poor, and knowing that God will ultimately triumph as a, a the, 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 the prophets in all of the doom and gloom let you know, but there is a God. Here you go, Reverend Poe, this is the good news right here. But see, good news is not good news if you ain't gave them the bad news first. And most you of us are busy trying to give people good news that we ain't gave them the bad news that happens if they don't accept the good news. Good news. We got to water down good news, y'all. All right, y'all getting me excited mm -hmm. again. And it's almost time. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then the last one, messianic hope. Over and over again, the prophets were prophesying about the ultimate, the ultimate vaccine Jeez. for our original infection. Jesus. So let's look at a few key passages and then we are out of here on this great Friday night and I'm going to let y'all loose. Let's look at some key passages. So first, let's look at the posture of the prophet. Isaiah 6 and 5. This is mine, boy. This is a good one. If you really want to go back, go back and read Isaiah 6, uh, you know, and read the whole thing. But but definitely, you, you, the whole, really, Isaiah period. Read from 1 up to 6. Because Isaiah said this after God told him that the people would not respond. And he said, then I said, woe is me. For I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And he goes on in verse 7 to say uh, 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 that they asked, who could they send? It was the us again. Who can we send in Isaiah? And Isaiah turned around after all that and said, here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. To speak to a way with people that do not know that they are lost worshiping idols to speak to a folk that will hear the preacher preaching and reject his word, to even send me who now recognizes that I too live in this same place, that I bought into this system, that I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. A preacher is not ready to preach, a teacher, a prophet, whoever you, if you ain't been through this, then you ain't really came through your calling yet. And you got a whole bunch of folks that call themselves. Because the first thing God do, he remind you of your wretchedness. Right. Yeah. Rich and done. Don't preach from no high horse. <laughs> oh, no. Amen. I'm preaching about what us and done done, not what y'all done done. <laughs> That's right. Amen. So, so this is the posture necessary for the prophet. Uh, but then we see the power of God's judgment in Ezekiel 9, verse 1 through 11. Uh, uh, I'm going to let y'all read that one on y'all. We ain't going to go through because I don't want to extend our time uh, today. But then we also see the plight of God's people in Ezekiel 37. We see God telling them that it got so bad, it was a mass casualty event. It's a whole valley full of dry bones. You know what it takes to create a valley of dry bones? Bombs have to be dropped for valleys of dry bones, or you got to be ambushed. Somebody got to right. get you from the top down to yes, kill all yes. of your people and to have a whole valley full of dry bones. But check, that's what we're looking at. That's what America looks like 
for, for the colored person. It's a valley of dry bone. I know we love to celebrate the anomalies, the ones that squeeze out the folks that make it. But y'all do know that while 30% of us have gone on to college and, and graduate and living well, that over 70% are living and still in those same treacherous uh, conditions. Terrible education, terrible access to funds, housing, all of these health care, all of these things that sometimes in our suburban state we can take for granted. They become our norm. We think everybody has them. No, most of our people are actually in the Valley of Dry Bones, dealing with generation after generation of bad education, generation after generation of bad housing, generation after generation of bad health and health care, generation after generation of financial ruin, yeah. generation after generation. generation. That causes valleys of dry bones. And most of our communities, that's what they look, even the ones that dress up nice. Mm. The Soto dress up nice, but look at that graduation rate. And I ain't talking about over a short time. I'm talking about look over a 15 year period. Mm? Yes, that's true. I've looked, have you? Dry bones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the way down to our middle schools and elementaries, y'all. Yes, that's some true. make it out. But we got to start seeing this different. God is prophesying. Now, true, the systemic nature of our God is prophesying judgment to the nation that created that. There's no doubt. But he was also telling the people that if you don't begin to help bring these things back together, mm -hmm. then these things will be like this forever. Restoration is in the hands of God's people. So the apply to God's people, the purpose of God's correction. What was it? Amos 5, y'all just got done reading this one, mm -hmm. verse 24, said, we love this because Dr. King quoted it, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Let justice, justness, living justly, equality for everyone, loving my neighbor as myself. He said, let that roll down like water. Yeah. And because of it, righteousness, like an ever-flowing stream. We're supposed to be preaching until this is our reality. Amen. Amen. The promise of messianic hope. We see this one, and most of us don't see messianic hope in this. It says, I am going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. That Elijah is not saying he's going to bring Elijah back alive. Y'all, Elijah got caught up to be with the Lord. He never died. We know this, right? Y'all with me? Yes. Amen. Right? He never, he never actually died. But the manifestation of him coming back, who was Jesus meeting with when he was up there at the Mount of Transfiguration? Elijah and somebody else. So there was a piece of Elijah's spirit that's already in this continued manifestation of Jesus. So this, these are these are figurative. These are allegory. This ain't direct right here. What he's saying is Jesus is going to have to say to contend with the prophets of Baal, to contend with the spaces where there is not proper worship. I'm going to send you the one who can teach you proper worship. Can I tell y'all a little something before I close? This is my contention. Most people are waiting on God to destroy the earth through fire, literal fire, right? That's what he said. So I think mm -hmm. some of that is our reality when we look at global warming. But it ain't him that destroyed it. It's our waywardness and our sin. Can I tell you the other way I see this? Jeremiah said it was like fire yeah. cut up in his bones. This gospel, this good news, this calling, this anointing from God, this push for righteousness, this demanding that we line up with God has the potential to be fire. And can you imagine if we actually set the world on fire with the knowledge of God's redemptive plan? Man. Would it destroy the world? No. It would destroy the world's systems. Yes, it would. Yeah. It would destroy the world's systems, not God's creation. Because right. remember, when he was talking about destroying them, he was talking, he destroyed their way. He preserved his goodness. <laughs> there you go. I believe he wants to destroy this way, but it's going to take a revolution of believers, all set on fire 
and understanding that we all have the spirit of Elijah in us because we have the spirit of Jesus in us. He wants to set it on fire. So this is the promise. Promise is in us and through us. What did he say in the last days? He do what? Your, 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 he said that there would be that there would be dreams and, and visions and that the young people would prophesy. And then after that, what did he say that that was? He said it was after the tongues of fire came and sat on everybody on the day of Pentecost. Amen. I want to sit there for a minute because that connects us to Isaiah 6. That's the commissioning of a prophet, you guys. When, when, when God commissioned Isaiah, he took the coal that was on the altar and he cleansed his mouth. That's why he said, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. So the cleansing that God says is going to happen at the day of Pentecost when the spirit rests on everybody is that I'm going to cleanse your mouth and I'm going to put my message back in it. And we have not seen that broadly in this world we live in. We have not Amen. seen broadly. We've seen preachers that have been touched, but we ain't seen whole congregations <laughs> be touched, y'all. God is waiting on all of us to be set on fire, not just a few preachers and teachers. Last but not least, and then we out. Posture of God's people as we wait. What are we supposed to be doing? What are we supposed to be doing while we wait? Whether that wait is a literal wait because the Holy Spirit has not descended on us yet and we are waiting. Or whether it's the wait as we wait on the Spirit of God and the sons of God to be revealed and daughters of God to be revealed and for our army to come together. How are we supposed to be operating while we are still in this space? Yes. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7. We love 29, 11. Everybody know 29, 11, right? <laughs> for I know the plan. That I have, we'll, we'll quote that one in a heartbeat. That's, that's that's one of the popular ones right there, especially among health and prosperity and well enough plans to prosper you and to be. No, he talking about the people that are that. in oppression. And so that's why we backed up. Let's see what he's saying. These are folks in exile. He says, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So if they're in exile, he ain't talking about no prosperity preaching. No, no, sir. That is not what Jeremiah, that is not the context of Jeremiah 29 and 11, right? This is actually right. the context of somebody that is speaking faith into something that they cannot see because currently they do not have that prosperity. Next, he says, what do I want you to do while you're there? This is what he said. Build houses and settle down. Well, you're going to be there. Plant for gardens me. and eat what they produce. You're going to be there. Well. And have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city in which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. So here's my truth. As much as I am anti-matrix, I cannot hate America in this season. I have to seek her welfare. I cannot hate the colonialists because I actually have to desire their redemption. <laughs> ah, th this is the difference between some of our black and woke theology because it leans in towards an anger and a hatred, but our new covenant does not allow those who are not gracious enough to be included that have been grafted in only by grace and mercy to now exclude somebody that needs the grace and mercy. <laughs> no, this is, this is why y'all, our faith is so peculiar because it don't make sense. It does not make sense at all that I'm supposed to love my enemy, pray for those who despitefully misuse me and abuse me. God says this is the posture his people are supposed to be in. And when we come back on the other side of this, he said all this while his people was refusing to hear. that The Jews, could they were so chosen, they couldn't hear. It. This was our issue. They were the chosen people. Everything about them was about being exclusive. When God says everything about my faith was to be inclusive to those, every, whosoever will, let them come. 
So he said, I got to go around y'all and graft in some people just like Abram was in the beginning that was so far outside of the spectrum that they'll make sure that they bring in the other folks outside the spectrum too. When we get introduced to Jesus, this is what he's doing. And you'll see that in his walk. Who did he help? All the people that were excluded. Amen. Ain't our time yet. We'll walk through it. I'll show you some of that stuff. Uh, next week, you'll get another uh, uh, um, you'll get another commentary by Sunday. That commentary will be on our introduction to the New Testament. You guys ponder that four hundred years of silence. The God's people would grow so wayward mm -hmm. that they couldn't even hear His voice anymore. Couldn't hear His voice. Do you think it was God not speaking? That was just how far, how far away from him. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some symbolism for us today as well. Oh, yeah. So I want you to meditate on that. Think that through. And, and here is here is your assignment of reading uh, for uh, uh, Monday or Tuesday. I'm sorry. You will be reading through uh, uh, the, 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 the Gospel of Luke. And I want you to read. Y'all know, y'all know the first assignment gonna be gonna have a little length on it. I want you to read Luke from one. I know I wanted you to go through four. Let me see if, if we're gonna go further. One through. Oh yes, definitely. So we're gonna go one through five. And uh, on Luke, chapter 1 through chapter 5, this is a long weekend, so don't get mad at me. Y'all ready? And then we are also going to go with John, chapter 1, or, or John 1, uh, and we are going to also go 1 through... Oh, yeah. Yes, one through five as well. So you got 10 chapters over the weekend, long weekend. That's, that's, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, into Tuesday. So that's less than two chapters a day, you guys, if you start today. All right? Is it first, John? First, uh, no, no, uh, just, just John. One. Gospel of John. We're going to read from the Gospel of Luke. We're going to read from the Gospel of John. So okay, gotcha. one through five in each one of those. Gotcha. To jump us off in this New Testament conversation, okay? Because right. we're not going to obviously get to read all of the Gospels because yeah. after that, we transition into Acts by Friday and all of our last few classes will be on the foundations of the church and you actually get to the pillars of worship, fellowship, discipleship, and stewardship. And that's how we will end the class. I was talking about a group project for you guys. There, there, there won't be a group project. So we won't have any additional assignments other than your final, which will be a compilation of your quizzes and your five-page paper, okay? Do we do a paper this week or do a reflection oh, paper for Tuesday? Oh, oh yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Reflect One-page reflection paper for Tuesday. Each week, remember, you are building up towards your five-page paper, so it'll be a lot easier for you to synthesize, read your own papers from the first four weeks, and then be able to write that final paper, Okay. So this week's paper is going to be over Amos. Yeah, the prophets, the stuff we cover today, the image of God, God's plan of correction through the covenants. Yes, the last paper that you got, uh, and 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 Amos and those covenants. I want you to think through that, think that through, and some of it you've already shared. But yes, write write it write it down. We we've done some raw thoughts today, or at least started it. Write down your overall reflection as we get ready, because we're ending the prophets and begin the New Testament on Tuesday. Okay. Y'all good? Sounds good. Well, look, look, I didn't lie. I said we wouldn't be on to 8.30, but I didn't plan on keeping you this long either. <laughs> 8.24. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me, let me pray for you. Uh, I pray, I pray you were blessed and got something out of today's class, you guys. I, I really am excited with the dialogue and the conversation we continue to have. Uh, be encouraged. Know that, that learning and growing in God is a journey of faith. Uh, and God is as patient with you, uh, and even more so, 
uh, than you are with yourself. So every time you want to condemn yourself and put yourself down, remind yourself, uh, as we stated today, multiple covenants and multiple failures by multiple thousands of generations of people, he still offered you grace today. So if he offered that grace, he knew who we are, where we at, and the growth we need. Take baby steps and keep moving forward. Amen? Amen. Y'all are doing wonderful. Y'all really are making me peacock, peacock proud and hyena happy. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let me pray for you before we go. Father God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for these, your servants, God, these, your children, Father, these who are made in your image, God. Restore us, Father. Restore the image of God that dwells in all of us, Father. Not, Lord, uh, for our own purposes, Father, but so that we can be restored to the original design that you had for us, Father, and that we can carry out the purposes that you have for our lives. Bless each household, God. Remember every prayer that was prayed at the beginning of this call. Keep us this weekend, Father. God, our thoughts and our minds, give them clarity even as they write and prepare for Tuesday's lesson and give them, Lord, understanding as they open up your word and read your gospels. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. Now bless those that were not with us this evening. Keep us until we come together again. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good night, everyone. See y'all on Tuesday. Good night. Good night. Amen. Peace out, bro.